so here are three ridiculous lies about UK immigration rules that people are confidently spreading around. Some of these lies even give me a headache, even the thought of it. And people actually believe these and it's costing them. Really? In today's video, I'm going to debunk all of these with solid hard evidence or proof. All right. So if you're interested, stay tuned. Stop that. <laughs> Anyway, this video is probably sponsored by Transfergo. Transfergo, for those of you who are hearing it for the first time, is an international money transfer app that allows you to send money from EU to many, many African countries. And you can send money to Ghana, Nigeria, and several other African countries. Transfergo is rated the best financial app on Trustpilot. And with Transfergo, in at most 30 minutes, the person is going to get the money you're sending. Yes, all you need to do is just use the link in the description or just download Transfergo app. And remember to use my referral link, okay? And you can also generate your own referral link and then make some extra cash whenever people use your link to transfer money. Transfer Go is rated by the UK Financial Conduct Authority so you can trust that this is a legit way of transferring money. You don't have to be afraid of losing your money. No, 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 no. So with Transfer Go, you can actually send money to Nigerian bank account or USD bank account in Nigeria 24-7. And if you have any issues whatsoever, customer support team is willing to assist you whatsoever, whatever time it is. Remember, with Transfer Go, there are no hidden charges and they are trusted by 4 million plus users worldwide. Hey. Which better offer than this? Thank you so much, Rasego. So the first ridiculous lie, and this particular lie, I actually personally used to believe it. I believed it so much until just recently, this was debunked or this was proved to be a lie. So the first lie is that children born in the UK to parents on skilled worker visas or health worker visas can assess the NHS for free. And I believe this for all these years since I've been here, honestly, because first of all, antenatal care was free. When you went to deliver your baby, you were not asked to pay. When you went back to the surgery, the GP surgery for all the vaccinations, nobody sent you any bill. So it is only normal for you to believe that the NHS is free. But guys, it is not free. So this is a letter that a friend of mine who lives in England received. Obviously, I'm going to cover the details. It says, Dear parent or guardian of Miss blah, blah, blah. I note that your daughter is an inpatient at the, there's a hospital and we are writing to you regarding her entitlement to free NHS treatment. Parents legislation states that only people who are ordinarily resident in the UK and have valid leave to remain in the country are entitled to free NHS care. Visitors and tourists can access primary care that is GP, but are liable to pay for hospital treatment. We are therefore writing to request a copy of your daughter's current immigration status or, if applicable, British passport to exempt her from hospital charges. Bear in mind, this is not somebody that came to the UK on a visit visa. This is somebody who has been living here for so many years and did antenatal care here and then gave birth here the delivery was free, antenatal was free, and then suddenly received this letter. This is shocking, right? They are not here on visit visa, no. It says, as a health surcharge parent or guardian payee, in relation to their child's NHS entitlement, you have a responsibility to regularize the child's immigration status where the child has been born in the UK. Then they explained in the immigration rules, they said that, a child born to a person who is exempt from charges under regulation 10 or 11 will also be exempt from charges while they are aged three months or younger, provided that the child has not left the UK since birth. Parents should ensure that they regularize their child's immigration status in the UK during this three-month period, which may include the parent paying the surcharge on their child's behalf. If the parent does not regularize their child's status, they will be liable for any charges for treatment provided to the child after the three month period apparently the healthcare is free until the child is three months old after three months old you have to pay unless you, you regularize your child's status in the uk what do they mean by regularize they want you to apply for a dependent visa for your child for your child to have brp to show clearly that your child is a dependent of a skilled worker or your child is a dependent of somebody on a health and care worker visa and as such let's say has already paid immigration health a charge or um, is exempt from paying immigration health a charge so they want you to prove this after three months other than that everything you will send a bill. And my friend confidently wrote a letter, replied back to the hospital, stating that no, they are exempt. He's on a health and care worker visa and the child is a dependent of somebody on a health and care worker visa and as such is not required to pay, blah, blah, blah. Explained everything. Yet, they would not and they even gave him a deadline to make payment. Guys, it is free until the child is three months old and it also depends on whether or not you sent the child out. Even if the child is less than three months old but you traveled outside to, let's say, your home country with a child and then you came back, even before the child is three months old, 
you do not qualify for the free healthcare after the three months period because the free healthcare for the first three months of a child's life in the UK rule states that you should not have sent the child out of the country. Look at that. And people usually say that they're not going to apply for dependent visa for their children because it's costly. Rather, they will wait until they, they get their ILR and then, or they get their British passport and then they can apply for the child British passport or apply to register the child as a British citizen. But guys, if you are in England, this is the rule now. Should your child fall sick, you're likely going to get a bill. Let me also add that I know another parent who is in Northern Ireland and has been assessing free healthcare, although the child is over three months old, has not applied for dependent visa for the child, but has not had any issues. So I am made to believe that this is only strict in England, but in Northern Ireland, you can get away with it. However, we don't know for how long. Please, if you give birth in the UK, do you not think that it's automatic your child can assess free healthcare in the UK? You'd have to regularize your child's status by applying for a dependent visa for your child. And then after that, when you go to the hospital, you can confidently say that your child is eligible for free healthcare because you're dependent. The second ridiculous lie that I had, and this was confidently being shared in a WhatsApp platform with migrants and people believe this lie. So it says, children born in the UK should not be taken out of the UK so that they can get British passports when one parent gets ILR. If you take their child out, that means you will require to apply for a BRP first because without a BRP, you cannot enter the UK with your child. So let's say you give birth in the UK and then you apply for a dependent visa for your child. You get your residence permit and then let's say you travel on vacation with your child and then you come back in. They are saying that once you put your child as your dependent, now they would have to go through the requirements of staying in the UK for five years before they get the ILR and then they will now wait for the 12 months period before they apply for the British passport just like any other person. That is a big lie. As you all know, my son who was born in the UK in 2021 just received his British passport. My son has traveled to Ghana. My son has traveled to the US even before we make the application to register him as a British citizen. So clearly this is a lie and they had his passport so they saw that he's traveled. When when you are making the application you submit your passports they make photocopies of the pages and then you know as part of the document my child has a brp which we submitted as part of the documents that we used to apply for his citizenship registration so clearly that is a big lie there is absolutely nowhere in the immigration rules that states that if you are a migrant and you give birth in the uk and you want your child to get passports after one parent gets ILR, which is the rule you should not have traveled out with them immediately you travel out with them they are not eligible that is unfair because are you saying that if I gave birth to the child in the first year that I moved to the UK, for the next five years until one parent gets the ILR, my child cannot travel, not on vacation, not on... What if there's an emergency back home and you have to travel? The child cannot go because of British passport. It's not nice and it's not true. Do not believe this. And because of this, this lady who sent me this thing to ask me whether it is true, she has stayed in the UK with her family ever since she gave birth, waiting for this time to come before she travels with the child. How unfair. Whoever is spreading this misinformation, you are costing things. Ah, so this is a child between myself and this lady. So this is after I shared pictures of my family and I on our holiday trip last year to the United States. And then this lady says, did you get a Ghanaian passport for him? I was of the opinion that children born in the UK should not be taken out so they can get British passports when you get your ILR. And then she went for that to say that, I was thinking if we take her out, then when we get ILR, she won't get the passport, but she'll have to wait another year to get it. Doesn't even make sense. And this is actually the thing that is being spread in several, several WhatsApp groups. It says the child will have to wait for both parents to have ILR first before the child will get ILR and then graduate to naturalization when the main applicant. This doesn't even make sense because naturalization is for people 18 years and above. Children are not asked to naturalize. They use the term register as a British citizen for children. And once that is successful, you apply for passport. And I've shared videos of my child's journey, my son's journey on this platform. So I will leave all the videos of every step that we took until he got his passport on here so that it will be easy for you guys. Do not believe this. Make a passport for your child. At the moment when you give birth to your child, your child is not eligible for the British passport because probably none of you is settled, none of your parents are settled or is a citizen. No problem, get your home country's passport, go to your home country's embassy in the UK or whatever and apply and then get dependent visa or a residence permit for your child so that you can be able to easily travel with your child and come back to the UK at any point in time so that when the time comes you can apply to register your child as a British citizen without any problems we submitted his BRP we submitted his passport with all the stamps of his travel and his US visa boldly in it and his Ghanaian passport we submitted everything and it was not a hindrance nothing in the rules say that you cannot travel with your child now it's out of my chest like I was so bored when I heard this one the third lie is that your spouse qualifies to get British 
British citizenship once the other partner gets British citizenship. We all wish this was true, but it's a big fat lie. Listen, if you are a migrant in the UK, there are various routes to settlement. We have people who came as students and now on a 10 year route to settlement. We have people who came as skilled workers or health and care worker visa holders and now on a five year route to settlement. Other types of visas that are on the three year route. So depending on which one you came with, depends on how many years you have to wait till you get your permanent status. So let's say for me, I am settled. I got my settled status last year. When I get my passport, my husband does not automatically become. But there's this good news that I did not know as well that I discovered just recently and I'll share with you let me read the rules from the gov.uk page it says that if you are married to or in civil partnership with a british citizen so for instance me and when i get my british citizenship very soon my husband who's married to me this rule applies to him it says to apply as the spouse or civil partner of a british citizen you must have lived in the uk for the last three years listen to this you also need to have either indefinite leave to remain or settle status under eu settlement scheme if you do you'll be able to apply for citizenship immediately once i get citizenship and he is my husband he should have at least lived here for at least three years and he should have settled status in the uk and he should have his indefinite leave to remain how do you get indefinite leave to remain he should have lived here for five years depending on the kind of visa that you are on five years or 10 years or three years if he has lived here for at least three years and he has his indefinite leave to remain depending on the routes that we came through then he qualifies to apply for citizenship and then there's something here as well it says you can apply for indefinite leave to remain after you have lived in the uk for five years it's explaining to apply for citizenship with indefinite leave to remain you must usually have lived in the uk for 12 months after getting it but here it says you do not need to wait for 12 months to apply if you are married to a british citizen let me explain so you Usually, to apply for settled status, you should have lived in the UK for five years, especially those that came as a skilled worker visa or health and care worker visa, blah, blah, blah. After the five years, when you get your indefinite leave to remain or permanent residency, you now have to wait for 12 months to apply for your British passport. And it's the same for your partner. Your partner also has to wait for five years to get indefinite leave to remain. And then, ordinarily, has to wait for 12 months before they get their passport as well. However, if at the time that your partner has gotten his or her ILR, when the other partner has British citizenship, they do not have to wait for the extra 12 months. They can automatically apply for part their passport after they get their ILR. Let me read that part again. You can apply for citizenship if you've lived in the UK for five years and you have had one of the following for 12 months, indefinite leave to remain, settled status, or indefinite leave to enter. However, you do not need to wait for that 12 months to apply if you are married to a British citizen. Once I get my British citizenship in some few months time, God willing, if my husband has gotten his ILR, he does not need to wait for the 12 months to apply for his British passport. He can apply immediately for his passport. Do you understand? So basically guys, that is, it is not automatic. However, you do not have to wait for that extra 12 months after ILR to apply for the passport if your partner is already citizen at a time you can just apply for the passport straight away after getting your ILR I hope this makes sense so my final words is that guys it doesn't matter if the Facebook group it has 10,000 members or it has 50,000 members it doesn't matter always when people share such critical information do well to verify and that is why for me I love to leave links about everything that I'm saying that will take you directly to the gov.gk website and then you can read everything that I'm saying for yourself so you have to verify whatever information this can be very very costly and it can even make you make some mistakes in your immigration history if you want authentic genuine well researched information about uk immigration it's on this channel make sure to hit the like button if you benefited from this video and subscribe for more authentic immigration 